Welcome into AWA Unleashed. We are the number one self-proclaimed, preeminent. That's the word we like to use around here. Get to know it. It's like Pee Wee Herman. It's the word of the day, right? Everybody, you know, you got the chairs and everything that are going on. The preeminent AWA video stream and podcast dedicated to more than a three-state territory, by the way, the American Wrestling Association. Don't believe what you're hearing online from the trolls. That being said, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring in my buddy Mick Karch. And Mick, uh, you know we've we've had uh, we've had quite the fun over the last few weeks, online, offline. But uh, we're gonna continue the fun. We've got somebody special today, and and I'm looking forward to it because it's somebody that's been requested several times. Absolutely, he's a, a great guy, a friend of mine for. 35, 36 years, whatever, which is amazing because I'm only 41 years old. So I was going to say, yeah, I, well, I was more impressed that you had friends more than, you know, 30 plus years. I'm just keeping it real for the kids. As, as I was saying, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to <laughs> talking to our special guest after we take care of some uh, housekeeping stuff. Yeah, you, you guys know the drill. Uh, you see the hat. It's from Soda Stick. It's the only place, by the way, I, I was on uh, what they call the internet. Um, apparently, it's where you can get all this information. I see that there are still AWA Unleashed t-shirts and, you know, all sorts. That's not the real stuff, you guys. That's a knockoff. That's like the generic. They spell AWA, you know, W-A-W. You know, that, that's just how bad they are. So, you don't want a WA t-shirt. You want an AWA Unleashed t-shirt. You get that at Soda Stick CO. Uh, dot com. You tell that's where I got the the skull hat. Love it. Um, that's where you can get your official stuff. By the way, if you've got a t-shirt, a, a hoodie or whatever, because now that we're getting into September, uh, go ahead and let us know. Send us a picture. Uh, send it to Mick. Send it to me. Put it on. You know, whatever. Just make sure that it's you uh, with your merch. Uh, put your you know put your name. Let us know where you're from. Who your favorite AWA wrestler was, or your favorite announcer. Yeah, you know, apparently it's uh, Larry Nelson. So uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that. Oh, hey, Mick. Sorry, I thought I took you out of the shot. Um, also, if you love pizza, <laughs> if you love pizza like I do, I mean, that's why I take the shot from the head up because it's uh, body by pizza. It's Seventh Avenue Pizza, you guys. It's absolutely great. The best frozen pizza on the market. Um, it, the great thing about Seventh Avenue Pizza, you guys, is that it. It tastes fresh because it is fresh. It's so much better than everything else on the market. So trust me, once you try it, you're not going to go to anything else. Seventh Avenue Pizza dot uh, com. That being said, Mick, um, I know that you are still uh, we're, we're getting closer and closer to I think once you started to put this out there, people are getting a little they're getting a little excited about uh, what you're working on because you're a, you know, I give you shit, but you're a busy, busy guy behind the scenes. Thanks a lot. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, Three and a half minutes to bury you. Now it's your rebuttal time. It's like a you debate. time, 57 minutes. <laughs> uh, so, yes, we're working on the AWA reunion in the Twin Cities area. I have talked to a few people about uh, getting things going venue wise and talent wise and so on and so forth. So we're going to get it done, and uh, it's going to be a good time. We, we did it a few years ago, had some of the AWA guys come in and schmooze with the fans, and, and the guys loved it. The fans loved it. It was yeah. very casual. We're going to do it again, and uh, as I've said, we'll, we will let you know the where, when, why, and how uh, as soon as details become available. But stay tuned. It's going to come up sooner than later, so it look, it's looking good. Absolutely. I, I love it. I love to hear that we're making progress towards it. Uh, we've also, if you're in the uh, the Red River Valley, um, we're going to be at Below Zero Wrestling. Uh, coming up this Saturday, as a matter of fact, this Saturday, September 10th, uh, Mick and I are going to be up at the Outstate Brewing Company in Fergus Falls right before the Below Zero Wrestling show. The uh, show starts at four, doors open at three. That's when our show is going to start. So again, we are just a few days away from our second ever AWA Unleashed Live coming up this Saturday, September 10th in Fergus 
falls and you can see right there uh join our awa unleashed fans page dude it is blowing up it is growing i love it it's for people that love the podcast uh so uh, thanks to to brian uh bubble huff who put it together he and jeremy do a great job uh you know it's it's just a great interaction i love it and uh, definitely become a, a, a fan of it that being said mick i think that we've taken care of all the housekeeping right I believe we have, and uh, you know we we are the preeminent podcast, as you said. For the yeah, AWA. good word, good yep. word. We AWA, of course, went in, into three states uh, in the United States, according to uh, some guy. <laughs> Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, and the Dakota. That that and yeah, one of the Dakotas. We're not <laughs> sure which, um, but uh, yeah, that's according to some guy who just never was. But at any rate. I am really, really delighted to bring on this guest because I've known him for three and a half decades, literally. And when you talk about the nice guys in this business, the genuine guys, uh, this is this is one of them. And you know, had timing been a little bit different, uh, I'm I'm convinced he absolutely would have been a megastar in this business. But in the meantime. Let's bring him on. We'll talk about the history that he had, not only in the independent scene, but also his time in the AWA. Where is he? My good friend. There he is. There's the Starfire. Derek Dukes, I'm assuming they still call you Starfire. I don't know. Do they call you Starfire, Moonbeam, Saturn? What are they calling you these days? I don't know. Ricky Ricky Rice used to call me stir fry. Well, <laughs> that's what I call me. <laughs> Ricky Rice used to cut problems about about uh, smelling his dad's farts at the dinner table too. So you can't take anything Ricky Rice said seriously. But uh, uh, Derek, our fire yeah. dude. Derek, I'm I'm gonna let Chris ask the first uh, few questions here, but I got to tell you something, buddy. I'm really pissed off at you because I'm looking at you right now. And why have you not aged one day in the last 30 years? This is just not fair. Not fair at all. You look great. <laughs> Thank you. You too, Mick. It's, it's good seeing you too, my old friend. We went many, many, many years back. Had a lot of fun. A lot of stories. Oh, we, we we got we got plenty of stories, and uh, most of them we can't tell. But we're gonna do the best we can. <laughs> right, Chris, kick it off. All right. Well, the first thing I've had as soon as we mentioned as soon as we mentioned Derek that you were gonna be on, uh, I have to start out with something that because this is my era too, the battle of the breakfast cereals towards the end uh can can you tell um, me about that you know uh someone sent me something uh, i kind of remember i think it was sunday morning someone sent me something on facebook and and uh i i i didn't know what they were talking about and then i i did i i'm so clueless i didn't even know that they were recording that so someone said they watched it on the WWE uh, network or something, and I I was oblivious. I didn't know they did re recorded that show there down. It was not down in Minneapolis, um, and I can't remember. Well, it was for General Mills, but I can't remember. We were the good guys, but I don't know if it was Kellogg's was a bad. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, it was. It was like a con what do you call it? Uh, we did one years ago. Uh, it's like a convention for like we did one with Ray Webb in Chicago, a pharmaceutical, and they we were the entertainment, and that's what we were for General Mills, the entertainment. So we were, I think I was Mr. Opportunity. I don't, I don't. Know. It was it was kind of kooky, but you know we, we got a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. One of the highlights of your career, Derek, right there. Uh, I know. I've already ruined yeah. the vibe of the show. I've ruined the vibe of the show with the first question. No, go ahead. Go on to your next question. All right. Uh, I would. I want to ask you, Derek. So, kind of take us back through your, you know, like where you were born, where you were raised, and what kind of athletic background did you have before getting into the business? 
Well, um, I was born in Boston, and as a younger, we moved to Ohio. You know, I had bad, bad asthma. So when, as a child growing up, I spent many, I spent, uh, oh yeah. From the time I was a kid up until fifth grade, I spent a lot of time in a hospital. So I would go in for two weeks, come come home, go back for two weeks, come home. They didn't have the medication that they have now uh, to control asthma. So I had a, I couldn't play sports um, on a team until I got to fifth grade. So um, when I got to fifth grade, I kind of grew out of it, and I lost weight. I was a chubby kid. Uh, then I got skinny, um, but that's uh, uh, I, I just played base basketball, football, baseball as a kid, and and then growing up, um, as I got to junior high, I played basketball, football. Then I stopped. I, I tried to. I tried to. Uh, I don't remember what grade it happened twice. So I wanted to be a wrestler ever since I was a little child, probably, probably five, six years old. And uh, um, I tried to get on a wrestling team, and I got kicked off because I kept trying to do pro moves. They said, go back to basketball, there. <laughs> and, and it happened again when I was in the 12th grade. But I always, ever since I was a little child, I wanted to be a wrestler. I had a friend that lived down the street. Uh, his name was Charles. And I believe Charles, yeah, Charles' brother-in-law was a wrestler, but I had never seen it. You know, I was, I've never seen wrestling. So my mom uh, said, you invite your friend over and you guys watch TV. And uh, he, he said, hey, I got to show you something to watch. So, of course, I didn't want to, I started crying. And my mom, I don't want to watch that. And my mother goes, Derek, that's your company. You watch what he wants to watch. And so I'm watching, who I was, after I started, well, I probably was hooked the first 15 minutes. And then he come back. It's another wrestling that comes on tomorrow, Saturday, or whatever day it was. Saturday, Sunday was big time wrestling. So we had big time wrestling and championship wrestling, and that I was pretty much hooked right then. I hope I answered the question. No, so so that was that was kind of how you decided to get into the business was just by yes, watching it. And yeah, yeah, I've got you loud and clear. Uh, so that that's okay. what, yeah, that's what ultimately was kind of the catalyst to get you into the business was just kind of watching it then yeah yeah that yeah oh yeah i used to love all the old guys uh uh you know we had the guys ernie ladd uh pampero furpo the sheik johnny powers bulldog brower kurt von hess carl von schatz bobo oh. brazil abdullah butcher oh yeah just a list of people that and you know back in ohio what well, yeah, all of a sudden, you couldn't see it on TV anymore. I think I got to about sixth grade, and you couldn't see it on TV anymore until I got to ninth grade, and it was, a, I believe, or ninth or tenth, and that's when the USA wrestling came on the cable uh, down there with, uh, I was talking to Bill Irwin, I can't remember, uh, uh, it was down there with, uh, it was on USA Today. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to say Bob Sweet in and Sweet Brown Sugar and uh, uh, Scott Casey. Oh yeah, it was Manny Fernandez. So yeah, Southwest Championship yeah. Wrestling. That's what it was, right? Because you're right. That's what it was, Southwest, and that's so. Then we could see it again, you know. Uh, then, then of course Georgia Championship Wrestling uh, came with TBS, and uh, yeah, and so I was, I was really nice to be able to see wrestling again. You know, we're taking a look at that picture of you there, Dukester. You know that you don't look a lot different now than you did back then. Uh, that's that's what I'm telling you. You you still look great. Uh, I I want to talk about an old friend of yours and mine, and I know he was very instrumental in getting you involved in the business, and then also as a mentor. Let's talk a little bit about our friend, the late Ray Webby. Oh, yeah, man, Ray. Yeah, I still think about him a lot. Ray, Ray, Ray was such a kind human being, and he would always try to help people, you know, and I won't mention certain names, but, uh, you know, he helped, he helped people, and 
And some people would stab him in the back, you know. It, just, it was, you know, some wrestlers. It was pretty sad. But, uh, you know, I used to enjoy because I, I didn't live far from Ray right when I right when I was – did I finish camp? I didn't realize we lived that close together at the time. Oh, there you Look at that great picture of you two. Isn't that wow. something? Wow. Wow. But we, I used to go, he had so, well, you know, Mick, he had, you go into his basement, he had so many tapes and tapes and tapes wow. of wrestling and, and, and cassette tapes and video t- and books and books and books. And yeah, he was just a knowledgeable person. And uh, I also worked with him at the homeless shelter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a kind human being, you know, really was. You know, it's really hard, miss. hard to believe I, I was looking online and uh, Ray's been gone 19 years already, which is uh, really hard to believe. Yeah, 19 mm-hmm. years, 19 years. Um, so, again, yeah, Ray was one of your mentors. And as you said, you, you worked with him, uh, I believe, at People Serving People for a while. Yeah. I remember that yeah. correctly. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's talk about the guy that I assume was, uh, really instrumental in getting you started in the business. And that's one Eddie Sharkey. Let's talk about, uh, fast Eddie. (laughs) Yeah, I I love Eddie. Uh, uh, you know, when I, I remember when I moved here, um, uh, how how I got into Eddie's camp was through my 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 I still call him my big brother Mike Mike St. James. You know Mike. Remember Mike St. James, Mike yeah, Smith? Sure. Sure. And so what happened was uh I still had an Ohio driver's license. And so there was a bar downtown at that time called mm. I wanna say it was called uh uh something street. Uh down there by down, it's called now. It's down. I, don't, I can't remember what it is now. Down there, anyway, it's gone. It, anyway, so I came in a bar. They wouldn't let me in, and so Mike came over to me. He goes, he asked me, "Well, why do you have Ohio driver's license?" I said, "Well, I moved here from Ohio, and I, you know, I transferred to, uh, from Ponderosa in Ohio to Ponderosa here, and I'm trying to get into wrestling school." My my buddy says the wrestling school here I, who I grew up with, he plays basketball for Inver Hills, Doug Walker. So and he said, he goes, are you serious? I'm in camp right now. So that's how me and Smitty became friends. He got me, he got me hooked up with Eddie, but I didn't have, you know, the money, right? So, so I'd come and watch and Eddie finally goes, look, Mike, he can't come and watch it without paying. So <laughs> I had some money saved up. And then I go, well, I don't, I, Eddie, I don't have the money. He said, well, we'll bring what you can and bring what, bring what you can. We'll work with you. I go, oh, man. So I had, uh, I forgot how much I had. But then I had some, some what do you call them, uh, uh, bonds from Ponderosa they had to, that you could cash in. I never got the value because, yeah, so that, that was part of my, I cashed. The, those bonds from Ponderosa was a contest. What you would do was, Put your name on the back of these coupons, and if the people came in to use it, you went on a board. And so me, it was me and another girl out of about 20 people. We won all the bonds because we no one else got any bond because they weren't doing the work we were doing. So I think I had like three hundred dollars. I'm not sure what the bonds, and I cashed that in with my savings, and uh, and then uh, yeah, he, he let me in. So I I had a big a decent chunk of the money. And so I'll never forget this because Eddie was excited. Oh, it told Dan Rignati, you know, was a trainer, Riggs, you know, Riggs. Sure, absolutely. Goes, uh, yeah, show him how to throw a Yeah, he goes, show him how to throw a punch, show him how to throw a punch. And, and, and Dan Rignati goes, Eddie, 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 we got to see if this guy can take a bump. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so that was the beginning, man. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was. I still remember like it was yesterday because I I was walking around in shock that I was finally I'm I'm going to you know I'm, my dreams going to come true to be a wrestler I'm 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 finally going forward with it and uh, and I was in you know, I was in La La Land and it was but boy I tell you once you got in the camp 
At that time, I don't. The, at that time, you guys, Eddie, Eddie's camp was a lot harder than it was years later. I'd come back and visit, and you know, and I go, man, it's not as hard as when we went through it, you know. But it was. Uh, I think. I, I think when I started, it had to be like twenty some people, and I and I swear, you guys, I don't think. I think only three of us finished. I think it was myself, Red Tyler, um. Uh, the guy's name was Dave West. Uh, Dave Dave uh, Westerhousing was I think was his real name. And then we had another guy, Al Al and Bob. But Al Al didn't lie. He broke his leg and quit. And Bob did too. So yeah, out of that, out of my out of my batch, T. Joe kind of all those guys like uh, Warlord. They had just finished, I think. Maybe they maybe they were, yeah. They were, yeah, they were finished because we were doing security at Eddie's matches. Uh, yeah, so that's – but that was my beginning of uh, Camp St. Louis uh, Park. I think it was a junior high, and we started out on the gymnastic floor with the mat, you know, and that's how we started out. And we couldn't get any ring time, guys, because um, when Eddie ran a show, that's when Ron Peterson would set the ring up, you know, so, uh -huh. so we couldn't get okay. any practice until he ran – well, so we went to camp. We had to work security for the for the show, right? And so I never forget this. And he comes up to me, says, "Put these in your shoes." Uh, he had foam. Put those in my shoes. Yeah, when you get in the ring. What? And then I realized what he's talking about because you bruise your heels. That ring was so hard, you know. It was so hard if your body's not used to it, you know. And so. Yeah, we, that's how we got our rope training and all that. We had to, you know, work security at a, and then we'd set it up. Ron Peterson would set it up, up and, but man, we had so much fun, you guys. We had so did, much. Did fun. you did did you know like anything about Eddie Sharkey before you came to the the Metro, the Twin Cities, or was it just kind of one of those names that hey, I I know this guy Eddie Sharkey. This is who I'm training with. Like, did you have any? prior knowledge of who he was and kind of what his camp was like? You know, someone asked me that question. I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue who Eddie was. Um, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. And, you know, in Ohio, he has that wrestling. Ohio, we didn't get, you know, we didn't get any of you guys' wrestling, you know, so I didn't know anybody. I didn't know, I didn't know Crusher. I didn't know uh, any of those names that I can recall, and um, I, I, there was a guy, well, I thought, someone told me, I knew Ivan Pusky, but I was saying he was dressed up in Mighty, when I saw him, he was dressed up in Mighty Igor's outfit, so I thought it was Mighty Igor, see, because that's who we, yeah, that's who we had in Ohio. Of that's, course. You know, but Mighty Igor, yeah. So I didn't know any, as I can recall, I don't know, I, uh, uh, now, Kamelkoff, I knew him because he was a manager of Igor. Sure. But I think they were a tag team here, yeah. You know, yeah, we, so. you talked a little bit about Eddie's cab. And first of all, I'm amazed that Eddie let you off the hook, you know, for 300 or whatever that is. That that just that just does not sound like Eddie. So you caught a real oh, break. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Mick, Mick. No, 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 no. You misinterpreted that. The three hundred I had from the bonds, but I, but I had extra money. I think I, Whoa. I think I gave him at that point. Yeah, I gave him. I think I want to say it's eleven hundred dollars. Oh well. Yeah, I still, I still you, you paid him as a, I paid him. Yeah. You know, I, I, I still, you know, I know people. I know people that stiff it, but I kept paying him. That's yeah, I kept paying them like, like I paid like a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks because you know I wasn't, I wasn't wasn't making a lot of money. I was, uh, you know, you know at that time, and so yeah, I still kept paying them. You know, other you guys know, just would stiff Eddie. You were in camp at a time when Solat Ustinov was there. He was working as Russian Crusher, and of course. Yeah. Uh, Alan West and Ricky Rice and, uh, you know, I mean, what a crew that was back in the day. And and it's interesting that you said that Eddie's camp was 
much tougher back in the day when you were there with guys like the Terminators and so on and so forth. What yeah. was a typical day like at Eddie's camp? Would you go through the calisthenics and then the wrestling? Take us through a typical day. Well, th it, it, this is what happened. So, first of all, Dan would make us – first we would run, run – and we not a lot, but we would run – um, and then we'd come in and do bumps. And I tell you what, Dan was a heck of, so was Eddie too. He, they were a heck of a teachers. So Dan would have you do a bump, but then as we progressed, he would, he would then, uh, put, put something in your way, you know, so you took a bump over that. Then after a while he would get there and you'd have to bump over him, and he kept getting higher and higher and higher. And uh, that's probably how I, when I did a sunset flip for me, I would get high from the outside or, or inside the ring because Dan would talk you, you know, he'd keep standing up higher and higher for you to get over him. And so we do that, and then we get in line to just do, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe our, we practice one thing. We practice one thing, maybe a week, and then no, nah, man, 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 maybe two things a week. And I never forget because after Dan has showed us a few things, arm drag, hip toss, and all that. Now Eddie says, "Derek, you guys, now you guys do it all together. All you know, go in there and now do all the moves together." And at that point, when he when he said, "I understood," you know, okay, you're doing you're doing all the moves instead of just one. And it was kind of exciting because you did, you know, the arm drag. I want to say arm drag, hip toss, field throw. I don't know what it was. I can't remember. But yeah, as I as, as years later, as I went to visit Eddie's camp, man, people were seeming to got lazy and they weren't, you know, they I don't know, they didn't seem to do what we were doing when I started, so, you know. And a lot of the guys that I saw later was a little older too, you know. Like, sure. My friend, like Larry, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I, I want to ask. Young, I young. Oh, sorry, Derek. I, I just I wanted to ask you about because uh, to stay on on Eddie Sharkey here that pro wrestling America in Fridley. Uh, yeah, I mean that was like a cult following there. Um, you know, at, at uh, I believe it was at Ropers, if I'm not mistaken. I, I mean, what was what was that like? Because I know Mick he's referred to that as the snake pit. I, I mean, those sometimes places like that are almost the best because you have fans that are so invested in it. Man, that place was packed every, and you know what? It was so, it was so funny because Eddie brought in, uh, brought in uh, Fantastics, uh, Bobby Fulton and, uh, and Tommy Rogers. Uh, I, I worked with, uh, 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 Doug Summers there, um, and you know, you know who we should show up all the time to watch would be Kurt Henning. Yes, and that was just a yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful place, and and uh, had, we had so much fun there at that place. Just a, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better venue than that. Just and they Pat and they'd be so into it. Well, we broke a few things there too, because it was slow. You know, uh, I think I was in the ring one time and. And uh, we we knocked out something above the ring or something was glass. I was working. I think I was working with Wolf, Doug Terminator Wolf and Doug Summers, Ricky Rice, and myself. And so later, something broke up in top with the glass. So later we they they did something so they wouldn't do it anymore. But it was so much fun, as you know, Mick. There, man, it was a good place. <laughs> it, it Dukester. They they ran. I remember they ran the first Monday of the month and that comfortably the building could probably seat 150 people, but there was always 250, 300, 400 people. I mean, stacked right on top of each other. And, and I kind of looked at it as being like ECW eventually turned out to be where the crowd was right on top of it. And everybody was just yep. nuts. It was the atmosphere yep. was Believable. <clears throat> Nuts and drunk. 
<laughs> yeah, I yeah, it was, yeah, they were, and they were wild. And the kids, the kids were so into it. Yep. Man, oh man, they they make they make it. That's the over. Oh, that's the first time I said they started. They would make posters, you know, and and hold them up to the guys and go, "What?" You know, I don't, I don't, I don't ever remember a bar being that that we ever did. Was that was none was ever packed like ropers that I can recall. Every not like time. that, not nuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, every time, and let, Chris, unless you experience that, uh, the old ropers days, you just have no idea. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. I can't. I yeah. I, I I have no. Yeah, I have no idea. Like I, I hear the stories, but I feel bad that I, as a wrestling fan, growing up, I didn't get a chance to be in that kind of environment. Like you said, Mick, I went to some of the ECW shows. You know, back in the day, but but I mean to to be a part of, of that at Ropers and Fridley's, I, I hear these stories and it, they almost kind of take on a life of their own. Well, the the crowds were nuts, and and uh, Dukester, we'll talk a little bit later on uh, yet in this podcast about some of the major stars that came through uh, Ropers and Fridley. But uh, again, when you were there. Uh, it was just electric, and you could count on it every month. You know, that, that first Monday of the month, it was basically a guaranteed sellout even before you walked in the door. You talked about some of the guys that maybe would have a little bit too much to drink, get a little too close to the ring. I remember sometimes if a guy went to the top rope at Ropers, the ceiling was so low that they would take out some of those ceiling tiles. You remember that? That where all of a sudden you'd have a ceiling tile go crashing down on the guys in the middle of the ring. Yeah, you know, you make you remember. So remember, Eddie Eddie had had that ring cut down to fit in the bars. Remember, because yeah. his ring was yeah. So when he, when Eddie cut the ring down, it got stiffer. So <laughs> it, yeah, you had the. Yeah, so it got it got stiffer than what it was. So, um, yeah, you you know you'd have to bend down, like, and you know we you get on top. You have to kind of bend over, and sometimes your feet. Well, I think it happened to me. What happens, my as I'm trying to jump off, the back of my feet would hit the the, the ceiling, you know, and then it come out of there, and yeah, we you know, <laughs> you know, you just I don't know. I, it was just a lot of fun at that place, and and then we'd go downstairs, and uh, and they had the they had a bar downstairs, and so <laughs> we, after our match, we would go out there drinking, you know, and they'd bring food. It was just a wonderful place. Oh my god! Oh, wasn't it though? I, you know, yeah. and, and Eddie ran that building <laughs> for for several years, and it was it was just. Phenomenal. Chris, I know you got a follow up about Eddie. Yeah. I, and I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two parts because these stories are just so good. Like I, this is when you get somebody on Mick and you know, the, like the stories that you're telling Derek are just, I mean, these are awesome. I'm just, I'm sitting here in awe. And this is when we came up with the podcast, this is exactly what, what uh, we envisioned was just being able to tell these stories. So uh, last question for part one here is, you know, not only did you wrestle for Eddie locally, but did you, I mean, you wrestled for him in like Winnipeg and, and other areas too. I mean, were you, did he kind of take you around to other places that he ran? Well, 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 see, well, what happened, what happened was I, uh, I was only in camp. I wanted at that point three weeks, and Eddie goes, "Look, we, he's ready. He's already ready. Just we'll send him up to Canada. And he'll drive." And with uh, so Eddie, Eddie, Eddie uh, got together with a uh, promoter Tony Candelo. Yes. Uh, which uh, yeah, it was called West Four Alliance. Right, Mick? West N- Four. NW West Four Alliance. Yeah. So they got yep. together, and that's that, my first match was up there, and uh, Mick Mick was up there. Uh, uh, and I didn't even have any uh, wrestling attire yet. I borrowed, uh, uh, I think, the Mighty Moe's attire. Mighty Moe's. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't ready. You know, I wasn't. 
I wasn't because I you know I didn't order. That was I wasn't finished with camp. But he goes, no, Derek's good enough to let him, you know, because I've been watching for so many years. But yeah, so he, yeah, we did stuff there and went up there and had fun. Winnipeg and Tony and and we had some uh, fun up there too. Oh, I well, I know you did. I, I, I'll tell you that. I mean, I didn't have as much fun as you did. You know that goes <laughs> with everything. But uh, you know, Winnipeg was something else again, and it was interesting because on one end of the spectrum, you had Bruiser Brody, you know, and then on the other end of the spectrum, you had you know the Warrior and Bill Cody. So Tony kind of had a, a little mishmash, a little mix of all kinds of talent there when he brought in the guys from the PWA. Yeah, I were in, gosh, I remember, I remember going up there and we got stopped at the border, <laughs> held over because somebody in the car had uh, some muscle enhancing things. So we got the TV, uh, we got there almost late. Well, not late, but we were, two, they held us for two hours. But I'll never forget this, Mick. I'm sitting there and I'm going, we drove, I don't know, eight, nine hours or so. We get in and we're doing the TV and I see I see people walking in. I don't, you know, there were other wrestlers. I didn't know. It was Pretty Boy Anson and Puppy Dog Pelican, all those guys. And I remember this. <clears throat> so it ran. I, I can't know. It was so late, maybe one in the morning, and people were still out there. And I never forget this laying on a bench after this long, dreaded day. And I laid back and looked up at the ceiling and I go, God, please do not tell me this is what I waited for my whole life. And I don't think we left. I don't think we left till three in the morning. We had to drive all the way back to Minneapolis. And I'm going, this, you got to be kidding me. And, you know, it got much better after that because Tony booked. I think the next time he booked us, we were there for three days. Then we were there for a week. Then one. Then we were there for like three weeks. So he got he was getting the TV going, but I scored. I'm like, this can't be how what I wanted is not to sit here and all oh, day. I think I wrestled twice, you know. Um, but it was an all day. It started and it's the clock and it was late. And but he was just starting his TV, you know. It it's it's not all a glamorous business. <laughs> and I think no. we're probably gonna leave that there for part one, right, Chris? Yeah, uh, what we're going to do here, guys, is because I know we've still got a lot more to get to with Derek. We're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to wrap up part one right now. Um, and uh, we're going to come back with, with part two. So uh, just uh, so just to let you know, this is going to be it. We're going to come back with uh, Derek with part two uh, next week. So, again, uh, just continue to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, go ahead and go to the AWA Unleashed uh, fan page on Facebook. Uh, go ahead and do that. And, you know, just, again, Soda Stick. If you want Unleashed merchandise, go ahead and, and go, to Soda, uh, go to Soda Stick because that's the only place to get it, you guys. It's the only place. If it doesn't have the Soda Stick logo on it, it's it's false. It's not real. It's it's bootleg. It's not real. Um so that being said, we're going to go ahead and stop it. Uh, I'm going to go make a 7th Avenue pizza here, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, come back to it. So uh, reminder, we'll be back uh, next week with uh, Derek Dukes, part two. Till then, so long, everybody. <laughs>